Hey everyone, it's FoxtronModelMakingGuru.com here, back with the Ammo of MIG build of the Perfect Grade Zaku 2. Now, where are we up to? In the last episode, you remember we painted all the green armour, so that's all now done. Uh, like I said in the last episode, I decided not to go ahead and add more highlight coats, because I'm happy with the way it's come out, knowing what I'm going to be doing once the thing's all ready for weathering. So we've got some subtle pre-shading around panel lines, and that's going to work for me. Uh, also went ahead and did all the little tube parts for the, um, for the what do you call them, for the hosing that goes around the legs, arms and around the neck and the waist. Uh, came out really nice. I kind of did a slightly different green tone. I mixed in some red-brown um, and did the top bits. I've got to turn these over and paint the other halves. Then I realised, of course, I'm never going to get that exact same mix when I do the top half, the bit that's currently stuck to the tape. So... Yeah, that might be interesting, so I might have some slight variation on these. Whatever I tried to do, I couldn't get any paint inside them though. You'll see inside there, it's still red. Hmm, I just couldn't get the airbrush to go in there and get painting. So I'm going to have to go in and manually paint with a brush, a dark colour. I mean, you won't see most of that once they're on the, the spring that they're attached to anyway. But I might paint them dark just so it doesn't stand out. So that's that done. So where are we up to now? Well, I'm going to be completely hyper and jump back to the inner frame. Now, if you remember when we left the inner frame last time, it was just painted like this. This is the uh, white primer coat and then uh, a coat of gun metal. What we want to do is get this looking more like metal because this is uh, it's an interesting colour, but it's a bit grainy. and It's not very shiny and it just looks like paint. Um, and I never actually intended it to be just this colour. I intended this to be the base colour. Uh, in the same way you do pre-shading, and you might paint the part black like I did for some of the parts, this is my base colour upon which I'm going to do the, the, the pigments and colours on top. So, what I'm intending to do is take pieces like these and turn them into pieces like these. Now you can see here these look totally different. These look much more like metal. They're not anywhere near finished yet. This is just the first stage, just to give it more of a metal tinge. You can see how now here, I've got the more brighter metal uh, colour on the raised parts, and apart from a couple of dodgy brush marks there, uh, it's more varied now, and it has more of a metal sheen to it. it looks a bit more like metal. And I know it, it might not look quite as I intend when you see it on camera, uh, what I can see here is the, the brighter steel colours and then the gunmetal underneath is toned down a bit and acts like a, like a tarnish coat. So think of it like it's a piece of steel, it's got tarnishing dirt on it where there's friction and rubbing, that bit's rubbed clean so you get the shiny part and this part here, the darker bit, it's just where it's not rubbed against very often so it's still got that tarnishing and signs of daily use. So it just looks like that. And I was really proud and happy with the shield. Now again, this probably won't come out on camera because of my lighting, but this has gone from looking like that to looking like this. And I'm especially proud of this bit here. I've got the dark patch here and the lighter steel colour. Really pleased with that. That's come out really, really cool. Now, how did I do that? Well, you'd be glad to know it's really, really easy. Uh, and it doesn't require any skill or specialist knowledge at all and it requires quite simply a brush one paint and a bit of tissue we're gonna dry brush okay so this is how simple this is going to be we're gonna take some a mig 191 steel make sure it's shaken all over the place and get myself something to mix the paint in this is just a cotton bud lid uh, now the the thing with these paints is they come in the dropper bottles. So for this kind of work, ideally what I usually prefer um, is a pot of paint because then I can just keep the pot open and dip the brush in. But not a biggie. Just means we have to work a little bit to, at a time. So take some of the steel paint. You can see there the kind of colour we're working with. We're going to take a my what is my specifically my silver dry brushing brush, which is just a flat chisel edge brush was originally a medium sort of hardness brush. It's gone a bit crispy nowadays. And it looks like it's never been cleaned out, but it has. Metallics are really hard to get out your brush. But this is the only thing I use this brush for. So this is going to do perfectly. And what we're going to do 
It's really, really simple. Take a piece of tissue, and we're going to get some paint on the brush. If you've seen my other videos, you know what I'm about to do. Get lots of paint on the brush. We're going to take most of that paint off on the tissue. Seems quite wasteful, but trust me, it's worth it. You want almost nothing left on the brush. And all we're going to do is now use that to go across this surface. Now I'm not going to dab it in like this because I want to try and get it on the raised bits and not the recesses. So I'm going to go sort of across. And it always sounds really good when you say that and then it never quite works. And I'm going to put no pressure on at all. And I'm just going to very gently really just drag the brush across the surface. It's probably a little bit too much paint on there still. See if I can do one of these bits, you might see it better. I'm trying to go across parts rather than into the recess if I can. Now it's a slow process. It does require a little bit of patience. And you can do as much or as little as you want. If you just do a, a little bit, you just make scrapes and scratches. If you do a bit more, you'll actually recolor the whole part slowly. Now the problem with this is these recesses are quite shallow, so I'm really struggling to not get any paint in there. So I may have to live with that, but that's cool. And we're just going to build this up. Now the thing you'll know with acrylic metallics, you try and paint them. Invariably, they come out a bit particularly, a bit grainy. It's very rare to not have that with acrylics. The beauty of doing this is that when you dry brush this stuff on and build it up really slowly, you get a nice, smooth, pretty much grain free finish. Now you can see I'm struggling to avoid getting any paint on these recessed areas, so I'm just going to go with the flow go where the chaos of weathering takes me and just live with it and this is what I've been saying to a few people over the last few days have asked me various questions about things like you know how do I mix various colors and things like that for weathering and it's like don't overthink it weathering is natural weathering is chaos there's no rules and regulations so a lot of times in weathering you're taking a technique and you're using it but with no assumptions, no preconceptions. Let the actual process itself and the stuff you're using, like the material, the paint, the brush, let that dictate how it comes out. You can exercise some control. Obviously you can weather an area or not weather an area. You can go as far as you want or stop. But a lot of times it's just a case of do what you need to do and the piece and the brush and the paint will tell you how it's supposed to look. And that's done. I'm quite happy with that. And that's the effect we want. That was one load of paint on this brush. And you can see here, hopefully if it comes out on camera, we have brightness where the paint's taken and some little patchy dark areas where it's still gone metal. Now the, the dry brushing will basically tone down that gun metal so you can see here it's another piece see on that piece there the gun metal is now more of a warm browny color where you can see it just because there's a very light misting of the color on there and that's the idea this is like airbrushing it's like building up areas of wear and tear so if i wanted to work on the middle of this say panel i just very slowly start building it up and you can dab and jab the brush in if you want and it's a good way to build up little patches I'll see if I can find a flat piece to show you the effect I mean but that's what we're after so let's do another one let's do let's do this one and I'll show you what I mean about building up the color so get some more paint because that paints about done now take it off on the tissue again the trick with this is it's almost like you're replacing the airbrush with a brush now if you put loads of paint on this, then you're just painting on the surface and you'll just get big thick bits of paint. You might want that in some really, in areas where you want real exposed metal. But 
on this I want to be so what I'll do is a little test piece on the inside just to see that's fine now, there's not a lot of detail on here I'm going to take a bit more off but we've got this bit here now this goes that way and if I go like this it's just going to paint the middle bit so I want to try and catch the edges so we'll go that way initially and then we'll do that way there just catch the edges So yeah, if you put a lot of paint on, you're just basically then painting the edges. And what you might want that, like if I wanted that edge to be really bright, I'd make sure there's more paint on there. Now what I can do on this flat part here, I want to highlight this edge. So we'll do that. I'm running across the top of it. A little bit of pressure, but not too much. And if I'm lucky, what it'll do is it'll catch on the edges, and there'll be more on the edges than there will on the middle bit of it. Now on here, I want to catch the edges and bring the paint down. I want to suggest scraping that's gone like that and that's why you're running from the edge in because you'll get a subtle blend but sometimes you get a little streak or a little scrape and that just brings it to life. I'm catching the edge but I'm dragging it across the surface a little bit. Like I said in the last video again go out and look at things in the real world. Trucks structures that are steel. Go and look at things like um, unpainted handrails along the edges of roads like you get on a main road there might be a pelican crossing or a zebra crossing or something. I just said zebra. I became American. Sorry about that. Zebra Chris because I watch so many American videos on model making. <sighs> My friend Adam will be going yes he's become American. Hi Adam. Tony will be just face palming. Meh. Uh, yeah, go and look at things like handrails on the sides of roads where they're not painted, it's just it's just the metal, like a crossing or something. You'll see there's like dark bits and patches. So what I'm gonna do here, you can see here where I'm saying go with the flow and go where it takes you. You can see here I've got a bit more on this edge. A little tiny bit more. So I'm gonna work with that. I'm gonna expand that out. And again, I've I've been using the brush a little bit, so it's dried off quite a lot. So I'm just gonna very gently work on that corner, still going from the edge and dragging it across a bit more pressure as the brush gets dry you can use a bit more pressure and I'm just going to tease that paint in from the edge I hope you can see all this and what I'm hoping to get I'm do the same on this end you can go for quite a while before you reload the brush, it's quite amazing Especially when it gets to after a minute or two and you've not got much left, you can really do this, this kind of fading and blending. Now they are acrylic paints and obviously acrylic paints dry really fast. Now I will, I will say I've never had this kind of success with normal colours. It's only ever metallics that seem to do this for me and I don't quite know why. Metallics are just awesome. And these are awesome. And this steel is really nice. So what you see now, hopefully it comes out on camera. If I move it around a lot, it's because I know I'm trying to catch the perfect light. So at some point, you'll see what I mean. Because I've, I've worked with that corner, and I've just very gently teased it, and I've got almost nothing left on the brush, I've got this fade from almost pretty much the steel colour, and it fades down to this bit here, where you can see there is darker. And that's just because I've focused on this edge. Now, I'm not thinking about it. I'm not going this brush stroke here and this brush stroke here. I'm not. I'm just... You have to kind of go really zen and be at one just go where the paint takes you go where the piece takes you it's never going to be perfect like on here yeah i got paint on the insides on these inside flat bits and i was kind of hoping not to do that but you know what i can come back later with weathering products or washes and focus them on the inside panel so they'll be darker this is absolutely perfect that's exactly what i wanted it looks like steel that's got some dirt and tarnishing around here but this bit's nice and bright and these edges are nice and bright. And because I focused here as well, this edge becomes more bright. And that's what I'm going to do on the rest of the inner frame. Now, there is weathering to come, and there'll be a gloss coat to go over the inner frame. And there is more to do on the inner frame. I've been thinking about the traditional Gumpler methods, where you have things like gold and brass and other metallic shades for things like pipes and screw heads and components. I'm going to take a view of that when I've done this on the whole inner frame. Because... Although, you know, you might get some, like, 
high level mobile suit like a high level Gundam which is the fighter plane of the Gundam world of course you can have gold and silver and things like that on there because it's spanky and futuristic and these are grunt suits these are mass produced grunt suits in a factory in the back of beyond somewhere made by blokes with cigarettes hanging out the mouth and they're not going to have fancy schmancy bits on them so there will be some different colour components so I'm not really sure yet I'm going to get all this done first and take an overview it might be that I forego the traditional gold bits and silver bits and nice spanky mobile suit bits and instead go for more like it's a Russian tank it's a tractor it's a it's a crappy Cold War Eastern European car it's that kind of thing so I might instead of doing all the gold and the bling do things like have some shades of brown on some of the tubing or have some rust colors on some of the springs because there's loads of like piston springs and things I might do that instead to suggest it's a hard working machine and it's also kind of cheap it's cheap and mass produced so I don't might, might not go for all the bling so we'll see if I get all this done and when we come back I'll have had a think and a cup of coffee and listen to a few podcasts and uh, we'll see what we want to do because after this it's the deep that's the detail parts then when the detail parts are done there'll be a gloss coat to protect it all and then it's the weathering stage and whether we go straight to that or then go back to the armor I don't know yet so let me go and get on with the rest of these but you can see now what I'm aiming for uh, I always I always say that I I don't do the gun metal in a frame that most gunpla builders do and of course then I started with gun metal but I knew from the start I wouldn't be using gun metal as the main color I wanted this to look like metal metal and it may be a bit bright you know hey maybe these vehicles would have this inner frame painted a tank wouldn't have shiny metal exposed parts all over the undercarriage but it's my model and I can do what I want oh, oh it's one other thing as well um, a couple of people have mentioned about the, the canonicity of this kit how it's got a commander's aerial on the antenna on the head but it's just a grunt suit and it's not Charles Zaku and I, I don't care I'm having fun with this I'm making this up I've put little details on it it's just a it's just a it's just a grunt suit and maybe he's a bit better so he's got a thing on his head I'm making this up I had this back storyline that this is a mobile suit that's got one pilot there's like some little outpost in the back of beyond somewhere on earth it's got they've got like 10 guys that maybe it's a little fuel depot they've got 10 guys and there's one dude with one mobile suit for this little depot and he's not used it in months and he's a bit rough and ready and he doesn't really care so it's got little bits of custom paint on it he's had to scrounge parts that are broken off from other mobile suits from other uh, zakus so i did tell you that they're having different color panels at one point like a blue panel from a goof or a red panel from a, a, a wrecked you know uh, other zaku but in the end i was like nah. but that's my storyline it's uh he's like some scruffy bloke who just happens to be the one pilot in this tiny little outpost and he's dead lazy and he's dead scruffy and he doesn't really want to be there and he's bored so yeah it's not going to be a pristine spanky spanky vehicle this is going to be rough and ready russian tank think old russian tank badly maintained poorly looked after doesn't get washed very often so anyway i'll shut up now let me go and do the rest of this when we come back we'll be doing the next thing which will be the next thing okay and we're back right now apologies there was actually about a six or seven week gap between that last bit and this bit due to just live taking over and loads of other things so apologies this is taking so long uh, we're getting to the real cat herding stage now uh, I'm getting to the point where I want to be able to build the, the hole in a frame but there's a few little bits I want to do here and there little bits of touch ups and colours and things like that majority of them on the cockpit and the interior and the torso uh, so here I have a little short list of bits I need to sort out before I can start assembly now this is where it gets like herding cats and I've been going through the instruction manual pulling my hair out trying to figure out what I can paint and when and oh it's a nightmare why did I start a perfect grade um, so we have a little short list of three now I'm not going to go too whole hog on all the little bits of colors all over the rest of the inner frame just the current color scheme with the the gunmetal and then the dry brushed steel over the top I'd be quite happy with that and get it weathered up there are a few little bits I need to do uh, I've got things like the uh, pilot's chair a couple of the pistony valve things uh, and this little monitor thing that goes on the inside of the the front door the front door that's not the real word the the cockpit hatch that's a better word uh, these I'm going to paint with well I would say it's MiG-191 polished metal because it comes in the weapons kit and it's labeled as 191 polished metal however it's out on the bottle it says 191 steel and my other bottle of steel uh, is 191 so 
Not quite sure which is wrong there. So this could be polished metal. I suspect it's just steel. Uh, now we're going to be painting these, uh, not this bit, but the chair, the screen, and these two little bits of turbiney things. The steel to start with, and then some of the colours over the top. Uh, after that, we have some little grills uh, that go on top of the torso uh, and some radiator parts for behind the thrusters at the back and some little tubes that we're going to paint Dunkelgelb uh, MIG 011 Dunkelgelb this is that colour that if I ever joke about it is the colour that no two modellers on any kind of forum can ever agree is the right colour uh, I don't care it's a nice colour I don't care if it's accurate to World War 2 or not it's, it's Dunkelgelb there you go and Dunkelgelb itself changed throughout the years of World War II anyway. So just to stop all the arguments, it's Dunkelgelb, end of discussion. Uh, and then last of all, we've got some bits over here. We've got the, the two thrusters, the sort of rocket engines on the back, uh, that go on the backpack, and the thruster bells. We're going to do those in silver initially. Uh, the thruster bells we're going to do in silver and then some other stuff to make them do on camera, dear. Nice and shiny. Uh, the engines themselves will do in silver. Uh, and again, some other colours. We might do a grey or something around this housing area. And maybe some little touch-ups on there. And there'll be some different gloss varnish and things on these to make them look different. So silver for those bits. Steel slash polished metal for these. And Dunkelgelb for those. So let me go and get the airbrush going. Uh, I'll get those done. And then we'll do the next bit. Back in a moment. Right, that's all these extra bits painted and look at the shine off that silver I've brush painted the silver before and it's never been as lustrous as that and this is over a, uh, what color was it? it was the satin black base coat so imagine that over a gloss black that's really nice and that's gonna be a really good base color for my engine I'm gonna put some other colors over it but we'll get to that uh, everything came out really nicely I'd use some steel on the inside of the uh, cockpit hatches they're not going to be this clean. The inside of the cockpit, I've used the dry brush steel for this. I'm going to just do this as a base coat and I'm going to do some heavy fill from weathering in there just to muck it up slightly. Uh, so that will not look so clean and shiny. The seat, I've got to now go in and paint uh, some colours for the padded areas uh, and maybe some other colours here and there just to mix it up a little bit. Uh, the thruster bells, they come out really nicely as the silver colour. I'm really quite pleased with that. Once they've been gloss varnished, they should be nice. Now I'm going to have to make them look slightly used. So on the inside, I'm going to use, not sure what I'm going to use yet, something oily to just make it that oily burnt look. And on the outside, just a bit of something to tone it down and then we'll do a dry brush to bring it back. But what I'm going to do next, very quickly, uh, is these, whatever you call these things that the pistons go into, the mechy plated piston parts uh, that go in to the bottom of these, like these, these skewer sticks are, uh, I'm going to paint these with crystal red to get not a candy effect but a metallic red shiny effect. I decided I will give one little nod to you know the classic look of Gumpler having lots of gold and silver and shiny things in the inner frames. So although it's a standard grunt mass produced mech, I'll give them some shiny piston housing thingies, whatever you call these. Somebody tell me in the comments what these are called because I can't remember the bit the piston goes into. Right, okay, apologies. I did film painting these things, uh, but the film got corrupted, so I can't show you that. Basically, they've been painted with the um, crystal red, the clear red colour. The silver coat underneath means that the clear red comes out 
nice and metallic candy looking almost but when these are dried I'll give them a good gloss coat and they'll look nice and shiny then they'll be weathered and they'll look terrible and beaten but that was the idea I just wanted to get them looking I wanted a few nice accent points now time to paint some little details uh, there's lots of little details I want to paint all over the inner frame but I'm not going to film all of it because it'll take me days and days so we'll just do a couple as an example uh, for example on these uh, engines these are the the rockets that go on the back of the backpack what I'm going to do is paint this part Dunkelgelb I like that name Dunkelgelb and then what I may do is paint some of these other little parts here and there different metallic colors just to bring it out uh, and this is before we do anything to make it look like oily dirty metal so this is just the base color still so I've got myself my uh, MiG 011 Dunkelgelb Dunkelgelb I like that word a little something to put some paint in so I get a few drops of paint knock the camera of course and what we'll do is we'll just give this a quick tickle now it may take a few coats the first coat may not be very uh, good because it's going on a slightly shiny colour oh, no, actually it's not too bad but it may be a little bit streaky whenever you're brush painting you want to use more let's move this out of the way so I can get to it you want to use more than one coat because the first coat generally will be quite streaky or uneven so I'm just going to go around and realise I've got nowhere to hold it. Hmm. Didn't plan that very well, did I? Let me get an alligatory clip. Come here, alligatory clip. Right, there it's better. Planning. It's all about planning. Something I don't do. So I'm just going to give this a go. And again, this is just the first coat. I'm not too worried. Let's see if I can change the brightness so it's not quite so explodey bright. Hang on a minute, let's change the white balance. Let's find something white. Uh, what have we got that's white? That'll do it. Right, there we go. It's a bit better. No, no better at all. Brilliant. Okay, well, that's the downside of painting a metallic colour. Filming something that is metallic. It's shiny and explodes on screen. Now, I'm going to be quite tricky to get around these bits. So I need to knock the camera many times, as many times as I can. Get a little less paint, that's a bit too much. Just go around the edge here. Now these little rivets on the end, I'm going to go and do those again in a metallic colour. But I'm just going to get the top edges, these top surfaces done first. And then we'll go and sort out the edges. <laughs> yeah, there's so many little details I'm going to paint on the inner frame. That it would take me like four episodes so I'm not going to show it all but I will obviously show what I've done afterwards and talk you through it but for this part we'll just show this now again this isn't super neat this is just the first coat once this is dried for a little bit I'll go over it with the second coat just to flatten it out And what I'll do off camera, I'll do these little edge parts here because I really need to get close in and look at what I'm doing for those. So I can't really do that while I'm filming because big camera in the way. This is why I don't often film brush painting because of my eyesight because I'm an old man. I'm 45 this year, you know, because I'm an old man. I can't really do a lot from a long way away. So I have to get a bit close. So I'm just going to go around the rest of this part paint the rest of this sort of superstructure because it looks like the rocket motor is housed on this kind of big clamp so this will be a nice it's a strange color it may look like a strange color but it'd be a nice color to contrast with the green on the inside of the frame so i'll go off and do the rest of that in a moment let me put that to one side okay what should we do next let's do another little bit i don't want to give you just one thing okay these things these little whatever these things are uh, I think what I might do is, I think, I'm not sure, I might leave the, the pipes metallic, so this bit and this bit, and that bit, and paint this a sort of rusty colour. Again, there's going to be lots of weathering going over the top that will make it look much better. So for this I'm going to use MiG 043 Shadow Rust, which is a nice ready colour. Okay, right, let's get some paint. Okay, so you can see it's a nice brown base colour for rust. 
remember we're making this look kind of old and worn so let's get this on camera and do a little bit of painty painty and again this is quite a thin colour so this may take a couple of coats really can't get my brush in anywhere that isn't in the way of the camera And this is what I'll be doing over most of the inner frame, little bits that stick out and details and things. Mm -hmm. I've just recently picked myself up some Ammo by MIG matte varnish, which means finally, now it's October and the weather's drawing in, or rather the nights are drawing in and the weather's getting rubbish. I'm not at the mercy of weather for doing things like matte varnish because I've always used rattle cans before now. So finally, I can do matte varnishing indoors via the airbrush, which is really cool. So now I've got gloss varnish I can airbrush, matte varnish I can airbrush, and primer that I can airbrush. I am a happy bunny. Stay on target, stay on target, some little fiddly bits around here. Again, I won't show you me brushing the whole thing because I'm sure it's not very interesting. Plus, it's really hard for me to talk while I'm doing this because I'm trying really hard to concentrate. You get the idea anyway. So that's going to go a kind of nice ready brown colour. And what we'll do, uh, once we've done all the little detail parts and all the weathering, well, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to paint all the bits that need painting, the little detail parts on the inner frame, get the frame built as best I can, uh, and then I gloss varnish the whole thing in situ while it's built, and then weather it. Uh, what I might do, though, in the next episode is just get the cockpit painted up and weathered because that's an enclosed unit so I need to build that before I build the rest of the frame I need to get that weathered before I build the rest of the frame around it so what we'll do we'll leave it at a close for here I'll go off and paint the rest of these little detail parts that I've got to do and I'll show you what I've done in the next episode uh, now I have posted something on the Facebook page uh, facebook.com forward slash model making guru um, and I have put a little video up on my YouTube channel youtube.com forward slash model making guru uh, asking you for questions what we'll do when we do the the frame building part rather than having three episodes of me building the inner frame and just trying to talk for three hours um, I've asked four questions it's like it's almost like an AMA it's like an AMA it's like a, a question answer session I've done them before if you follow my channel so uh, what, I'll, what I've said is either on the post on Facebook page or on the YouTube video I think it's called I need your questions uh, just have a look on my YouTube channel go along and put any question you like on that video or on the Facebook page. The video is easier because otherwise you're hunting around for a post, Facebook post for hours. Um, and it can be a question about anything. It doesn't have to be about model making. It can be about me. It can be about the weather. It can be about bananas. It can be about cats, about wasps. It can be anything you want. Ask me a question about anything at all. The only things I'm not taking questions on are obviously religion and politics because yeah we ain't doing that uh, so what I will do is when I get to the point of building the frame because some people have asked me to make sure I do film the build part of this as well as the actual painting I know the focus is on uh, these ammo products and the page but a lot of people have asked me to make sure I film the build part of this as well and I want to keep those people happy um, so yeah ask me any question and what I'll do is as I'm building the thing and putting it together, putting the frame together, I'll, I shall answer your questions, if I can, in an amusing and comedic manner. If I can't, in a factual and boring manner. Um, so yeah, go to, uh, easiest ones go to YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash model making guru. If you're watching this video, just click on my name in the description and it'll take you to the, to the page. Uh, and I think it's called something like, I need your questions. Put your questions on there. And when we do that episode, I'll collect them all together and we shall have ourselves one or two question and answer build sessions. But that's going to do it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. As always, take care of yourselves uh, and go build things. Uh, check out these MIG products. They are awesome. These ammo by MIG. They are really, really cool. I'm really having a good time doing these. So 
I'm really enjoying these paints. And adios amiibos. Now if you excuse me, I've got some tiny things to paint.